Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video is going to cover model kit use. Plastic model kits may look like toys, and they certainly can be fun, but these are actually powerful tools for understanding the three-dimensional shapes of molecules. They'll also help you see how molecular shapes change with rotation, which is something that's sometimes difficult to imagine without a model kit. They can also help bring concrete meaning to two-dimensional drawings of molecules. We have methods for drawing three-dimensional shapes on a two-dimensional surface like a piece of paper or a computer screen, but it's not the same as holding the structure of a molecule in your hand. It really does improve your understanding of organic chemistry, and students that get to know their model kits and get practiced with them and learn from them tend to be a lot more successful in organic chemistry. This video is going to cover basic model kit use. Model kits aren't complicated, but there are some things that you need to know to avoid confusion and really get the most out of it. The models that I use in this video are from Maruzen HGS. I like this particular style because they hold their shapes very well, they're very crisp, and bond angles are easy to see. But other model kits work similarly, and you can make pretty much any model kit work. There are many different types of kits that you can get with different kinds of atoms and bonds and different price points. These are the components of a really simple kit that costs about $20. You can do a lot with this kit, and this is probably the only one most people need. I'll start off by going over the atoms that are present in this kit. I'll start with the white spheres, which represent hydrogen atoms. Now these are drilled straight through, so they appear to have two holes, but hydrogen only makes one bond, so only hook them up to one bond. Then we'll move on to the black atoms, which represent carbon atoms. There are two different kinds of carbon atoms in your kit, and it's important to note the differences. One type is sp3 hybridized and has four holes. The other type has five holes and represents an sp2 hybridized carbon. These are slightly larger, oblong, and they're used in different situations. In this video we'll go over applications of both types of carbons, explain how they're used, and give examples of each. It's important not to get these mixed up or you will be confused. The blue shapes usually represent nitrogen, but you can assign them to whatever atom you need or like. As with carbon, it's important to watch the number of holes associated with nitrogen. Some of the atoms may have four holes and some may have five. They're used in different situations and represent sp3 or sp2 hybridized nitrogen atoms. The red shapes usually represent oxygen, but you can assign it to be whatever atom you need. These may also come in sp3 or sp2 hybridized versions, which would have four or five holes respectively. This particular kit only has sp3 hybridized oxygen, but yours might be different. Most kits contain other atoms as well. This particular kit contains a green atom and a brown atom that are sp3 hybridized and have four holes. Your kit might contain pink, yellow, or other colored atoms. Finally, you'll probably have a couple of gray atoms that have lots of holes. These can be used to represent linear, square planar, or octahedral shapes. We won't use them too often in organic chemistry. These blue and green plates represent orbital lobes. I'll show examples of these being used a little later. Now we're going to go over the bonds that are present in the kit. The first type are these very short bonds. They're usually pink and they represent bonds between hydrogen and other atoms. The green sticks represent a bond that's a little bit longer but still pretty short. Then we have the white bonds which are your average single bonds that you'll use most of the time. When you're making a single bond between two carbon atoms or a carbon and an oxygen, carbon and a nitrogen for example, these are the ones you're going to use. Then there are the yellow bonds which are longer than average. These are meant to represent a bond between carbon and a third row element like chlorine or sulfur for example. The bent sticks represent multiple bonds. Use two for a double bond and three for a triple bond. Finally, the piece of black tubing is a bond pulling tool. I'll show you how that's used in a little bit. Next, I'll assemble a few representative molecules to show you how all the parts go together. I'll start with propane, which is a three carbon alkane that contains only single bonds. First, I'll assemble the carbon skeleton. It's important to use carbons that have the correct number of holes. Most of the time, it'll be the carbons with four. That's what I'll use here. I'm also using the white sticks, which represent an average carbon-carbon single bond. Sometimes it can be useful to look at just the carbon skeleton of the molecule before putting in all of the hydrogens. This is especially true in large molecules where a large number of hydrogens can make it difficult to appreciate the skeleton of the molecule. Next, I'll quickly put in the hydrogen atoms using the very short pink bonds to connect them to the carbons. The model kit does a nice job of representing the true three-dimensional shape of this molecule. It's not flat. It has bond angles approximating 109.5 degrees and has this zigzagging type appearance. That's quite a bit different than the Lewis structure in the upper right hand corner, which doesn't imply any geometry. Now I'm going to partially disassemble this molecule and show you how to use the bond pulling tool. 
Sometimes when you're disassembling a molecule, it can be difficult to pull the bonds out of the atoms. This is where the bond pulling tool comes in. You put the piece of rubber hosing over the bond, squeeze it to get a good grip on the bond, and then you can easily pluck it out. Next I'll build an ethanol molecule, which contains an oxygen, and show you how you can use those orbital plates to represent lone pairs. Here I'm grabbing two green plates and plugging them into the empty holes on the oxygen atom. These lobes will represent sp3 hybridized orbitals that contain a lone pair of electrons in each. In the model, you can clearly see the tetrahedral geometry of the oxygen atoms and the four groups attached to it. Next, I'll show you how to use those bent bonds to make a carbon-carbon double bond. I'll build a molecule of ethylene. We'll need to use the carbons that have four holes to do this. This is a little bit counterintuitive because carbons of double bonds are sp2 hybridized, and here we're using the sp3 hybridized atom to build the carbon-carbon double bonds, but the bent bonds make it work. Here's the carbon skeleton of the molecule, and when I add in the hydrogens, this is the model of ethylene, with bond angles of approximately 120 degrees. One of the neat things about the model is that it demonstrates the rigidity of the carbon-carbon double bond. If you pick this molecule up and try to rotate about that carbon-carbon double bond, the model kit won't let you, and that's an accurate reflection of the carbon-carbon double bond. They are rigid. Now I'm going to convert this double bond into a carbon-carbon triple bond to illustrate how that works. So I'll remove a couple of the hydrogens here and add one more bent bond. In the process, I'm going to be making a molecule called acetylene, which has a carbon-carbon triple bond. Acetylene is a linear molecule, and notice how the model gets this right and accurately reflects the 180-degree bond angles in the molecule. Next, I'm going to show you how to represent a carbon-carbon double bond using the orbital lobes in your kit and the sp2 hybridized carbons with five holes. This is a different approach than we used with the bent bonds in the previous example. The model with bent bonds does a good job of representing the geometry of a carbon-carbon double bond, but it doesn't give an accurate picture of the actual nature of the carbon-carbon double bond. The carbon-carbon double bond is one sigma bond and one pi bond, and this molecular orbital representation will do a better job of representing that. I'll start by connecting two sp2 hybridized carbons with a green stick, which is the right length for a carbon-carbon double bond. There are two different kinds of holes in the sp2 hybridized carbons. There are equatorial positions, there are three of those that have 120 degree bond angles. Connect the carbon atoms together with the green stick through these equatorial positions. 90 degrees to those are what are called the axial positions, and there are two of those. We'll plug orbital plates into these holes to represent the p orbitals that overlap to form the pi bond in the carbon-carbon double bond. Finally, hydrogens plug into the remaining equatorial positions to complete the molecule. In this model, the green stick represents the sigma bond between the two carbons, and the overlapping p orbitals, the blue and the green lobes, represent the pi bond of the double bond. If we tip the structure, we can see its trigonal planar geometry a little better with its 120 degree bond angles between atoms. This model also helps you appreciate why the double bond is rigid. If you were to rotate about the carbon-carbon double bond, you'd be breaking the overlap between the p orbitals, the green lobes and the blue lobes here. That would break the pi bond and that's energetically very costly. That's why the double bond is rigid. The last thing I'll talk about in this video is how useful the model kit can be for appreciating conformations of molecules. These are different rotational positions that a molecule can adopt by rotating about single bonds. The model kit is incredibly useful for appreciating this dynamic behavior. Here I have a model of butane and I'm just rotating about various single bonds, posing the molecule in different positions so you can see it from different angles. These are all the same molecule. Rotating about a single bond doesn't change it. It's still butane, but it does look different, and these different conformations, these different rotational forms of the molecule, do have different energies. That's a topic that will be covered in another video. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.